This morning's headline, Trump administration races to put nuclear reactor on the moon by 2030. The US has not put a man on the moon since 1972. They've never built anything complex in space beyond two orbital stations and they required international cooperation. Now they're talking about putting a full nuclear reactor on the moon. So every kilogram that you shuttle to the moon costs thousands of taxpayer dollars in dirty diesel just to shoot it up there. The payload for a functioning reactor would take multiple trips. Lunar construction tech to build anything on the moon does not exist. Not at operational scale anyway. The carbon burn just to transport the materials already completely erases this clean energy narrative. The US has made mistakes with nuclear energy in space before. In 1964, the SNAP-9A satellite dispersed plutonium all over the Earth's atmosphere. A reactor mishap on the moon would eject radioactive debris into orbital space. That's gonna kick out all your satellites, endangering any ability to fix the issue. It could blow up the Earth. A nuclear reactor needs uranium fuel. It has to be enriched to the right level and transported under armed guard. And then you need shielding, tons of it so that you don't fry your crew and their electronics and the satellites that are in orbit. You need a cooling system. On Earth, you can use the air and the water that's already available. On the moon, there's no air, there's no water. So now you need giant radiators to dump the heat into space. And we don't know what happens when you start to heat space. And even if you get that far, you will have to spend the rest of your life trying to keep this high technology precision equipment completely dust free in the dustiest environment in the solar system. And if something goes wrong, you can't exactly pop around for a service call. You need a whole robotic team. You need to dig trenches. You need to build walls for shielding. You need to run cables. This is all before you get a single watt of energy back from your power plant on the moon. None of that technology exists at lunar scale. NASA's designs are just drawings at this point. Every part of that reactor would need to be launched into space by rockets burning fossil fuels. For obvious reasons, launching nuclear materials into space requires multi-year service and safety reviews. Each launch burns a huge amount of fuel, releases soot into the upper atmosphere, warms the planet more and damages the ozone layer. All of this would only power equipment on the moon. Building this would do nothing for the energy on the earth. It would not feed any grid or replace any fossil fuel use on earth. NASA's stated target for this reactor on the moon is 100 kilowatts of electricity. That's about 70 homes on the moon. It's not coming back down. How are you getting it down? This won't power a single socket on Earth. It is a $50 billion engineering project to put an outpost on the moon. This is colonization. It won't replace a barrel of oil. Meanwhile, US political culture still frames solar and wind energy as weak and hippie tech while China is building both renewables and advanced space capacity in parallel. That dual approach, decarbonizing while advancing, is why analysts say that China is set to be the next global superpower. The US is positioning a dangerous symbolic stunt as their technological progress, but they are actively missing a huge amount of strategic opportunities in the renewable powered technological infrastructure space. If you took that 50 billion dollars that they want to blast to the moon and put it into renewable energy, America has some of the best natural resources for free renewable unlimited energy on the planet. There's the Great Plains, which is just a giant wind tunnel. There are wide belts of high capacity wind across Texas, Oklahoma, Nebraska, 
that could be generating 11,000 terawatts an hour. The current use across the United States of electricity is 4,000 in a year. The best wind areas in the Great Plains alone could generate over three times the national demand for electricity. Then there's solar. The southwest deserts have some of the highest solar radiation on the planet. Simply investing in solar panels on roofs and businesses across these desert areas would make America a clean energy exporter. 280,000 terawatts a year. One solar farm in the southwest, just one, would produce enough electricity for 188,000 US homes to never have an electricity bill again. Then there's offshore wind, geothermal, hydropower. America has access to the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean and the Gulf. All have strong, consistent offshore winds, so nobody needs an ugly windmill in their neighborhood. Offshore turbines could be feeding coastal populations with unlimited energy without any long distance tr transmission or nuclear debris everywhere. They have dams, the hydropower infrastructure exists, but it's been incredibly underfunded, thank you to neo-fucking-liberals. But retrofitting old dams in America could unlock another 500,000 gigs of free energy a year. No weather dependency. And that's just upgrading existing infrastructure. Even just one of those categories at industrial scale would give Americans complete energy sovereignty and a new position on the world stage. The lunar fission plant at NASA's own target size will produce 0 0.00035 terawatts a year, 70 houses. And you can't get the energy down off the moon. It's just for houses on the moon. And you won't succeed because they won't get it off the ground it's just burning your money you should care about the 50 billion dollars that they've put on this and they won't upgrade the dams it's 2025 climate change is accelerating and energy systems are under strain instead of putting taxpayer money into the existing infrastructure to enable complete energy sovereignty for americans trump is sending billions of your money to the moon He's going to waste years of engineering manpower and intelligence on untested lunar construction programs in the middle of climate meltdown. That is a very expensive flag planting exercise. And the reason why China is ahead.